ahead and throw crumbs of chips inside the Reese's peanut butter cups. They call it the big cup, I guess. And now there's potato chips that are on the inside. I think it's okay to have a Reese's peanut butter cup with potato chips, but to crunch them on the middle on the inside, that's like forcing it. Well, and also, are they still crispy? Or I would think the oil in the peanut butter would make the the chip soggy. Hey, if you talk preservatives, I'm sure it's crunchy. Well, I guess so. I guess so. But I don't, see, I don't like, I would not like a peanut butter cup and potato chips at the same time. Potato chips on a pimento cheese sandwich, all day long. A chicken salad sandwich? Honey, yes. But inside of a peanut butter cup? No, thank you. Do you put Fritos in your soup? I'm curious if Liz does that. I don't. I'm not I'm not a huge Frito fan. Chips? In you my crunch soup? them up and put them in your soup? No. I don't. Crackers? You crunch them oh, up and crackers, put them in your soup? Oh, crackers, yes. Okay, there you go. Yes, or cornbread and chili or something like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, no. Um, in a sandwich, yes. But the chocolate and the peanut butter and the chips all crunched up at the same time? No, no. And I see they're going for sweet and salty, but you've already got the peanuts, which are salty, and the peanut butter, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, somebody liked it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of people that like They've this. They've been spotted mashup. at Walgreens. Oh, yeah. You can get Walgreens. Get them at Walgreens. I haven't seen them myself, but. Why not? Are you, like, always at Walgreens? I go a lot. Liz is a Walgreens frequent shopper. Yeah, or CVS. You have the I mean, reward. Is there a reward card? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. There is nothing better than a crackling, roaring fire. For 20 years, I didn't have a fireplace. Mm-hmm. Never had one. So we would put it on our TV on Christmas. Yeah. So that we have some kind of ambiance, oh, you know, cool. for Christmas. Now, if I don't know if you have Apple TV, but I just learned Apple TV now has like a 99 cent app. That is a fireplace. Is it really? Yeah. Does it make the sounds like a uh, oh, an actual sure. crackling? Because that's like I don't like gas logs, and that's what we have because I like the actual crackling of a fire. But that's cool if yeah. you can do that. Yeah, that's nice. So yeah. we're gonna have our own version of it because we have the hundred hours of Christmas starting mm-hmm. for all of Christmas coming up. Right. Just a hundred hours before Christmas. <laughs> anyway, so we'll have our own version of that on our His Radio TV, which is on Apple TV and Roku and the web website and the my his radio app so we'll have that up and going too totally get all the ambiance from the music to the fireplace we provide we got it you provide your own crackling (laughs) rob and liz his morning crew molly's along with us this morning at 800-447-7234 okay molly you say you just left a drive-thru and something happened what was it man this is so nice i'm in dog and donuts excuse me goodness gracious all my friends could be laughing at me. And someone just bought um, my tea. And so I just paid for the car behind me, which was $23. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And so we're starting a chain at Dunkin' Donuts on Savannah Highway in Charleston. And everyone's paying for everyone's food and drinks this morning. The drive through difference happening right there. I got to say, it's Christmas, people. Everyone's going through a battle. But just love one another. I can tell you're so moved by this. I am. I'm rather an emotional person anyway, but I just, I couldn't believe it. I was like, you know, trying to get away. You just want my coffee. I want to hold up. And then I want to know that, um, to know that I listen to y'all every morning of my life. And you guys have touched my life in so many ways that you'll never, ever, ever know. And I thank God for y'all. Thank you. We love you, Molly. Hey, enjoy your tea today. Merry Christmas. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. It might not look pretty, but it tastes great. Welcome to Liz's Ugly Bakery. It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. And this is the virtual cookie swap edition, where twice a week now, Liz steps into her ugly bakery and makes one of the recipes out of the virtual cookie swap. You'll see all the submitted cookie recipes. You can still do yours as well. It's on the website at hisradio.com. So what's this morning? This is from Joyce, and she sent us Grandma Richard's sugar cookie, and it's her grandmother and her husband's grandmother. They're from Virginia, and she said it's kind of a different sugar cookie recipe. So the the, the recipe is on the website, hisradio.com. Yeah. Click on winners when you go to the virtual cookie swap. You'll see it all right there. And not only did Liz make the sugar cookies, she incorporated us to actually decorate these things. Well, that's how it's fun. Yours looks good. Thank you. It's my Christmas tree. Mine um, I'm turned showing it. horrible. It is not. 
it. You did an ugly Christmas sweater. Sure did. And it's cute. I mean, that's you've got a I star in the middle of it. I don't want cute. Here it is. I did, oh, no, I dropped it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that is horrible. Oh, it's I still lose. intact. No, it's not. It's all smudged. Well, we're going to hang these on our um, cookie that, tree as well that I brought in. You're going to have to fix mine. Oh, we got to put the fishing line back in it. Anyway, is that what happened? Yeah, the fishing line broke. I'm sorry. Here it is. Whatever. Okay. Showing it on his radio it's a great TV. <laughs> I need a napkin now. I know, right? Okay, let's start with uh, Caitlin. Yeah, because you got to Thank it. you, Caitlin. Oh, you're, we have to eat these that we just made? Y'all. I thought we were putting them on the tree. Well, we are, but we're also going to, we got to check the recipe and make well, sure it's good. Well, then give me mine back. Okay. All right. And I then thought... you can decorate another one during the show. No. Yeah. I'm done. No, because okay. we're going to vote on who did the best. These cookies are dead to me. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Caitlin. Oh, I haven't taken a bite yet. I thought okay. you were all too. Well, show it. Okay. There. So, oh. every, if you're watching uh, his Let's radio see. TV, you can see it's a snowflake. She did a wonderful she job. She did. Everybody's it's doing cute. so good. Don't drop it. So, oh, well. Is. Okay. Are you going to eat it? <laughs> yeah, take a bite. Okay. Because we've got to find out what these taste like. Don't eat the fishing line. Oh, no. I'm scared. I know. Is it good? <laughs> That's so good. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Does that not sound believable? <laughs> Let me try again. That was so good. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Those acting Woo! skills. Okay. Jake, one of our producers, how does it taste? What'd you do first? What'd you do? I, if y'all can see it, I did venom. So if y'all can, like, see this. Oh. I did. You could see the black and the eyes and the tongue and stuff. So I did my I did my man Venom. So here we go. Okay, so that's a Marvel, venom? right? Good. Co- sugar cookie. That's kind of cool. Okay. okay. Is it good? good? I thought it was honestly. I thought they were gonna be hard, but they're pretty soft. Yeah. I don't think okay. it's good. That's the best thing about a sugar cookie. It's got to be sturdy enough to decorate, but it's got to be soft enough to eat. Okay, morning show producer Ninja. Okay, <laughs> I made business office Santa. Business office Santa? Yes. Okay. Oh. Did you give him a little jacket? Look at. Oh, he's been up for a couple of days. He's got red eyes. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to eat him. Okay, mm-hmm. go, go over there. Yeah, you got to tell us what you think. Mm. You have to see this cookie. Tastes like a hard worker. Tastes like a hard worker? I don't know what that tastes like. I'm going to try awesome. mine that I demolished. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It tastes like a sugar cookie that was smudged. But it's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Joyce. And I think everybody did such a good job decorating, but we're going to keep decorating yeah, and right. adding to the tree. Right. Everybody did a good you job. You just dropped yours. Check it out. All. Yeah, I did. Virtual cookie swap. It's on the website, hisradio.com. You'll see the recipe from Joyce right there. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Andrea is along with us at 800-447-7234. What's going on, Andrea? Well, I just heard your little snippet on the Disney tram, and I wanted to share, whenever anybody has asked what my favorite ride at Disney is, I always say the tram. What? With all the rides? Why is it the tram? Because when you're going into the park, you're so excited. You're like, yeah, I'm at Disney, and I'm on the tram, I'm going into Disney. And then when you're leaving the park, you're like, my feet hurt so bad. I just want to sit down and you get to sit on the tram and go home. It's the best ride. Absolutely. From beginning to end, it's that tram. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad they're open again. That's good. Well, Merry Christmas. Thank you for calling today. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. This is funny. It's Rob and Liz. His morning crew on his radio. So Liz says to me, did you see the post? I'm like, what post? There was a snake in a station. There was a snake in his radio in one of our production rooms. There was. I, it's not funny. <laughs> it's funny. No, I was, when I saw it over the weekend, the post, I got freaked out a little bit. Yeah, okay. You know. Explain what you saw, the picture. So I saw what it looked like was a snake, a large black snake, and I don't think it was a black snake, I don't know what kind it was, hanging from a speaker in one of the studios. Right in front of a microphone. And right in front of the microphone as though it was, you know, trying to be on the air or whatever. But but I'm like, what? Because I come in when it's dark. We, mm-hmm. we come in, we start the show when it's dark, and I usually go back to my office, and it's dark back there. Okay, okay. First, there was no snake hanging from a speaker 
in that studio. That's what it shows on it, Facebook. It wasn't. Let me explain. So we had someone who walked in to the station, okay. saw a small little snake that Mm-mm. must have been maybe a foot long, Mm-mm. maybe 12 Mm-mm. inches. No, Mm-mm. I'm nope. telling you what I was told. Maybe 12 inches. They picked up the snake and put it into a pitcher, you know, that you pour water out oh, of. Oh, okay. Into a, that'll tell you how small the snake is. Okay, because they, they they brought it into the anything. studio and just held it up by the by the the tail and took a picture of it in front of the microphone. There's so many things wrong with that story. First of all, why are you holding a snake? Second of it's all, it's a rat snake. I don't care what. Ca- it's not poisonous. I don't care. And it was tiny. No, what I heard. Twelve inches. No, what I heard was that it's somewhere between four. And five feet no, long. No, no, And it they was. They are pulling your leg. They're not pulling my leg. Very trusted source told me this morning. I love this trusted source now because he gave you a fish tail. <laughs> no, nope. the thing was so tiny. It was not. It was barely a foot long. It fit into a water pitcher that it you pour water out. Up. Uh, it was they tiny coil- enough to, to fit Mm-mm. in that thing. If it were between four and five feet, as my trusted source said, it could still <laughs> trusted fit source. in that picture. That trusted source was pulling your leg on the size of I the snake. I don't think so. I saw because, the picture. Because this trusted source looked at me and winked. No, he did not. <laughs> Robin no. Liz, his morning crew. There was a snake in the studio the other day. We didn't see it. Liz saw a picture of it on Facebook. Over the weekend, I was like, why did no one tell me there was a snake in a studio? Describe it real quick, um, what you what you envisioned this snake to be. I envisioned a very long snake hanging from one of the speakers in the studio. <laughs> That's what I saw on Facebook. <laughs> in reality, it was a, not even a foot long, and it fit Mm-mm. into a water pitcher in which we released it back into the wild. So but I heard it could it go after rats feet. because it was a rat snake. Mm, I don't care what kind of snake it was. <laughs> uh, Jake, one of our producers, did you say your mom has a snake story? Yes, it is quite the humorous tale. It is pretty funny. <laughs> Real? What's her name? Ashley. Okay, let's get Ashley on the line. Okay. Still got to know this. You should, uh, I love this text. This is from Tess. Tess goes from Liz's description. She makes the snake sound like a 40-foot boa constrictor that's about to eat someone. I'm thinking yes. She's like, seriously? You put that thing in a pitcher? Did you, did you burn the pitcher, the water pitcher afterwards? I had plans. No. <laughs> I cleaned it and drank. Julie texted and said, there is nothing tiny about a foot-long snake, even if that's true. Snakes equal no bueno. No bueno, huh? <laughs> okay, okay. Here, here's here's Jake's mom. Ashley, okay, so what happened? Ashley, tell us a story. Um, I've affectionately named him Rufus, but I heard a noise in the kitchen two summers ago, and I walked in there, and there's a black snake crawling across the windowsill. Now, in my mind, I like to tell the story that he's about five feet long, but he probably was only about two. Um, so I called for reinforcement because I was home alone and I don't know why, but I called my mom and she said, do you have a box? Get him to crawl into the box and then take him outside, which I thought was a brilliant idea. So I tried that. It scared him. He flipped around, crawled down the cabinets and went under the cabinets in a hole that I didn't know was there. So I had originally thought he had come in through the dog door, but apparently he had his own door into the kitchen, which was this hole under the cabinet. I called Jake, and I said, you've got to come home right now. Spray this hole with foam that will fill up so he can't ever come back in the house. Oh, man. <laughs> he flipped he, around. He flipped around and crawled down the sink. I was so terrified because I was like, if he gets out in this house, yeah. I'm never going to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, where were you when your mom called? I was probably at work, to be honest with you. Do You, you don't remember? I, I, I don't remember where I was, but I remember coming home and saving the day. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Liz, his morning crew. Pretty interesting. The topic has turned to snake stories at 800 447 7234. Wanda texted and said, I came home from church one night. I had my infant and a toddler. Went to my bedroom to change. There was a three foot long black snake curled around a curtain rod right next to her closet. Now, her husband is a fireman. She said, I called him to come home, help her catch the snake. <laughs> Either he could come home or they could move. He and? had a choice. And? I think they still live there. I think he <laughs> okay. he, made, he made the right choice. He made the right yeah. choice. There you go. <laughs> Kelly is with us at 800-447-7234. What happened, Kelly? We were at a softball game. My daughter played softball. And um, there was 
two teams out on the field, men standing around watching the game. On third base was a 12, probably a 12-inch, 13-inch green snake. The seas parted from the softball team. All the girls ran in different directions. The men refused to go out there. I went out there, got the snake, picked the snake up, and I'm thinking, y'all have a little yellow ball thrown at y'all. It's like 65 miles an hour. But this little snake is scaring the whole two softball teams. It was absolutely hilarious. And you go out there and just pick the thing up. Yeah, and I put it in the woods, but it seemed like third base, so it come back again. No. I said, wait a minute, let me just, so again, the teams parted. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, let me just go get the snake. <laughs> Rob and Liz. His morning crew. I've been thinking a lot about this Christmas season and how some people have really hit on hard times. Maybe you have, too. And it's like, okay, I can't buy anything for Christmas, but I keep thinking, you know, about those gifts that money just can't buy. My son-in-law and daughter, um, they're newlyweds and, um, you know, have a little baby. We have the first grandbaby now. And so I remember money is a little tighter, you know, especially when you're first starting out. So they were wanting to do Secret Santa. And both of my sons, Luke and Hayden, said, mm-hmm. look, y'all don't have to buy me any, you know, buy us anything for Christmas. Don't. We don't want you to. But the youngest, Hayden, said, but what I do want is a picture of the three of you. Oh, how nice. Of Augie, Taylor, and Jacinia uh, in a picture frame. And he said, and that's really all I want so I can put it in my room. That is so sweet. I think so, too. I mean, you know, the cost of that's a couple of bucks because you can get a a picture frame at like Dollar Tree or something like that. Take a picture with your iPhone. Exactly. And just print it out and boom, there you go. And I just thought that was so sweet, first of all, for him to think of that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. it brought me to tears yesterday. I, I'm sure it did. Yeah. A proud mama. Yeah. And proud bitta, because yeah. that's what she calls herself as grandma. <laughs> bitta. Not grandma. No. Nope. It's bitta. Bitta. It's bitta. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are those gifts that money can't buy? Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Those gifts that money can't buy? It's Rob and Liz. Hi, good morning. His morning crew on his radio. 800-447-7234. Oh, the gifts that money can't buy. Linda said, I'm sending my dad, who's 90, a family portrait for Christmas. Nice. Yeah, so he can always have family around him. Jordan says, my mom's birthday is two days before Christmas, but she always says just being able to spend time with us is more than enough uh, the, you know, than a gift. She'd rather have the time. I totally get that. I would rather have my family there for me than something under the tree. Yeah, she says in her text, they live thousands of miles away. Sure. No wonder why you want to get exactly. together, right? <laughs> 800-447-7234. Melissa is here. So what is that gift that money can't buy for you, Melissa? Every year for four years, our wish is that my adoptive daughter could find her birth family. And it's something we can't buy, and it's something that we've been doing. She found them last week. Last week? That's like unheard of. She found them so quick. It's for real. She found them on a Tuesday and met them on a Friday. And it has been the most, I'm crying now, it's been the most amazing blessing for her. And just overwhelmed with so much emotion in finding her birth family. So it's incredible. 